When do we get our money, Daniel? I look at people and I see nothing worth liking. I think There Will Be Blood is definitely one of the best movies made in this last decade. And I couldn't be prouder of saying that. Paul is one of my best friends and the current filmmaking artist out right now, who I consider the most a contemporary, uh, the most a friendly competitor. And I'm glad to be making movies in the same time as Paul. Many people consider There Will Be Blood to be his masterpiece. I'm afraid I still have to choose Boogie Nights over There Will Be Blood. As exquisite as There Will Be Blood is, I, I still would prefer the exuberance of Boogie Nights over the formalism of There Will Be Blood. But the type from the obvious things like Daniel Day Lewis's towering performance. One of the things that struck me after I saw the film, which by the way, if ever there's a movie that demands to be seen, if not more, but definitely it needs to be seen twice before you can really have an intelligent discussion about it, it would be There Will Be Blood. It's so overpowering that a few days after seeing it, probably would amount to gibberish until you've seen it a second time. But I did try to talk to Paul about it that very night after I had seen it. One of the things I said to him is, you know, Paul is a very cinematic director. Like me, he enjoys indulging in set pieces. And the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, there's there's no, uh, there was really no cinematic set pieces in the movie. And Paul was, oh, well, thank you, Quentin. I, I, I take that as a compliment. I go, well, you may be the putting out of the fire, maybe. He goes, well, I get, if there is one, I guess maybe that would be it, as Paul replied. Well, then I saw the film again, and I was completely wrong. The, the putting out of the, you know, the, the oil fire is absolutely positively a set piece. It's a brilliant cinematic set piece. From the time that the oil derrick explodes into the time that the soundtrack kicks in, which is, by the way, I think one of the most modern original soundtracks you know, to be done of, of, of this last decade. But once that music kicks in and uh, you see Longview running with a, with a little boy, then you know, it's all that is a cinematic set piece. It's just different from the set pieces he indulged in both Boogie Nights and uh, Magnolia. There's been so many things already said about Daniel Day-Lewis's performance that I won't just add any more vomit of praise upon it because there are facts. Water is wet, the sun is hot, and Daniel Day-Lewis in this film is great. I will point out one little tiny thing, though, though that's very interesting. It's a little nuance. The opening 20 minutes of the movie, which is more or less silent, is actually quite terrific. But one of the things to take in is when uh, Daniel Day-Lewis's character breaks his leg in the mine and finds the gold. Look at the surrounding landscape around him. Those rocks. It seems like he's out in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't show his journey back to town. That journey back to town literally would be a movie unto itself, similar almost to the Richard Harris movie Man in the Wilderness. Because literally, he's got a broken leg. He would have have to actually, through those rocks, drug himself by his elbows miles and miles through the roughest terrain you can imagine until he finally got to the town and actually sought medical care while having to actually leave the gold that he found. That's not a contrivance. That's not a misstep. Day Lewis's performance so embodies the character that you can imagine he did just that. Also, as much of a bastard as this man proves himself to be, that courage that it would have taken to do that actually gives him the heroic right for almost everything that he does throughout the rest of the movie. He went through hell to get this fortune. He is not just a blood-sucking businessman, even though the film does work very wonderfully as, uh, not even a metaphor, as text for uh, the beginning of uh, capitalism in the industrial age. But the fact that the man actually would be able to accomplish such an act almost gives him the right for every Thing that follows down the line and the fact that Paul didn't need to show it you have to make that movie into yourself I think is actually quite profound if you actually even jump to the next scene he's laid out on the floor his leg in a splint him sitting on some sort of a uh, stretcher and uh, they're counting the gold dust on the scales look at Daniel Day Lewis even having gone through all that and laying flat on the floor He's still keeping an eye on him, you know. He's not that happy about these guys touching his gold. He's making sure that nobody's uh, nobody gets swifty fingers here. It plays lovely. If I had um, uh, a criticism about the film, it would fall to uh, uh, Paul Dano's performance. Not that not the performance is bad. There's nothing bad about it. It's just it does seem a compromise. It's just, it's he's just not in the level and the caliber of Daniel Day Lewis. If the two characters are meant to be combats throughout the film, uh, then Daniel Day Lewis is Muhammad. 
Muhammad Ali and Paul Dano is Jerry Ford. I have to say the relationship I enjoy with um, with Paul is probably my most cherished relationship that I have with another filmmaker. We are very friendly combatants. The way we look at it is um, we have a Marlon Brando Montgomery Cliff like relationship. I feel I'm Marlon Brando, Paul's Montgomery Cliff. And the reality is Brando was better because Montgomery Cliff existed. And Montgomery Cliff was better because Brando existed. And nothing makes me happier than for Paul to come out with a masterpiece like There Will Be Blood. I couldn't be more pleased for him, proud of him, and nothing inspires me more to do better. So I can actually say while there is no thematic link to my new movie and Glorious Bastards with There Will Be Blood, if I reach high points with Inglorious Bastards, it is partly because Paul came out with There Will Be Blood a couple of years ago, and I realized I had to bring up my game.